hopelessness. Sometimes we get into situations where every decision has consequences. We get so deep into life that it's impossible to move forward without looking back. So what should you do? What should I do? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe just take a step back and weigh the option. It's exactly what I intended tonight. It's time to reevaluate my life and the decisions that got me here. Is it still possible to find happiness? Or did I ruin my journey? If it's ruined, then why go on? What's the point? Well, I figure if one night alone could help me find some clarity from the two questions that burn continuously in my mind. What is the right choice? Is there a right choice? Will these two questions haunt me until my dying day? Or can I make a drastic change for the better? Maybe I should keep it all inside and let nature take its course. I don't know the answers, but I realized one thing tonight. Change can begin with something as simple as a conversation.
Hai. Ada ikut Pontiac? Few. It doesn't really get going for another hour or so. Oh. Good. Hoping that I hadn't missed anything. Do you mind? Am I disturbing or...? Feel free. Is this your first meteor shower? No, I used to come to this one all the time. It's been a few years. When it gets going, you'll see about 80 to 100 an hour. Fantastic. I'm a meteor shower virgin, so... But I've always wanted to see one. You know, every time you look at your phone, your eyes have to readjust to the night sky. It's gonna make it hard to see the meteors. Oh, thanks. I thought I was the only person who liked Adam's Attic. Oh, not at all. I've always been a fan of their music. I've seen them in concert twice, House of Blues and uh, Last year at the Seafood Festival. I was at Seafood Fest, too. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> this is quite the setup that you have here. The mattress, telescope, blanket, love songs. <laughs> Are you sure we're alone? Are you expecting someone? No, my, my wife was supposed to come. Oh. What happened? She just couldn't make it. Well, since we're both here, might as well introduce myself. Uh, I'm Nicole. Adam Foray. Pleasure. You, uh, you work at the hospital? Yep. OB department. Just got done with my shift, so... I, I read about the meteor shower on Facebook and thought, now's my chance. So here I am. What about you? What do you do? Well, what do you think I do? Um, if you had to guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, are you an insurance salesman? That would be a no. <laughs> no not even close, actually. Okay. Um, astronomer? Uh, cold. Do you own a subway? Uh, no. Uh, oil rig operator? Shrimper? Do you work for Peter? I'm a police officer. Really? You're lying. Why do you think I'm lying? Well, well no offense, but police officers don't go to watch meteor showers and listen to love songs. and They're too macho for that. Hey, thanks a lot. I mean, first impressions and all, I'm sure you're very macho. Okay, Mr. Police Officer, prove it. <laughs> no, you are a police officer. And a captain, is that high up? Yep, I'm in charge of a patrol district. 
Impressive. Four A. Is that French? Yes, ma'am. I'm originally from the Lafayette area. I moved down to New Orleans, figured I'd get more experience faster. Based on your accent, I figure you're from England. Mm. Originally, I'm from outside of London in Finsburg Park. But I moved here when I was 14, so. Have you ever been? No, no. I'd love to go. I love all the history. You should. I'd like to see it. Now, Finsburg Park, is that where Kate Beckinsale's from? Yes. Mm. Yes, she is. Do you fancy her? No, not really. Come on. Yeah, I probably wouldn't kick her out of bed. But... So what, uh, what brought you to Louisiana? LSU. At uh, 14? Uh, my father was offered the dean's position at the university, and he took it. And my mom teaches literature, so I got a free education, and then graduated and worked at Baton Rouge General and now I'm the charge nurse at Crescent City General Hospital. Rest is history. Excellent. Your parents still in Baton Rouge? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> they moved back to London after my father retired. So I miss them terribly. Do you visit them much? We've been gone for three years, and I've visited twice, so not too much. Maybe someday I'll move back. That's understandable. What about your parents? They're retired. Live up in a small town called Opelousas. Opelousas? Where's that? That's just up the road, maybe 30 minutes from Lafayette. Are you close? Mm, not really. Do you have trouble expressing your feelings, or...? Not at all. I do have trouble expressing my feelings to a complete stranger. Don't you? No. What do you want to know about me? Adam? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just don't want to... It's all right. I'll start. Um, I'm a Scorpio. I was born November 3rd, 1982. I've been a registered nurse for seven years now. Um, never been married. Yep, that's me. And you? Adam? What's the point of this? What? What's the point of this, asking me all these questions? I'm just trying to have a friendly conversation. Why? For, for an hour or two? Look, <laughs> if you'd rather be alone, I'll leave you to it. I think it. I'd rather be alone. All right, then. Nice to meet you. Wait up. I'm sorry for being rude. I'm just not used to this. Used to what? I did want to be alone, but uh, honestly, I think my mind could use a break. OK. Just a bad night? You could say that. You 
really hate opening up, don't you? <laughs> Are you always like this with your friends? Uh, not really. Uh, talking to them is different than talking to you. Why, because I'm a woman? Or, you know, you should have some lady friends. It's like having a cheat sheet. Yeah, it always starts out cool, but it always ends badly. Oh, I see. You've been hurt. You think you got me all figured out, don't you? I just call it like I see it. So, why the maternity ward? Well, that's simple. It's the miracle of life. No, really. Even in this fucked up world, I get to see the most pure and innocent thing in the world. And the most disgusting. Pain, blood, amniotic, Please. placenta, umbilical. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> There's that sarcasm. No, truly. After a while, you don't see those things. You just see this tiny little person entering the world and all the possibilities that that brings. <laughs> Roger that. It's amazing. Yeah. Did you want to have kids or do you have kids? No. No kids. I can't have kids. Sorry, Nicole. It's all right. I just focus on the things I can control. Great attitude. I mean, there's always adoption. I thought about adoption, but I don't think so. I wanted kids for a while, but... I don't think that's my path. I rather like being alone. It's understandable. <laughs> so, not married, no kids. What do you do with all that spare time? <laughs> Whatever I want. <laughs> no, I love to travel. Um, I spend time with my girlfriends. I love driving and just not knowing where you're going. And I read and I love movies. Oh, I love movies. I can talk about some movies. Really? Yeah, what's your favorite? I don't know. There's so many. Well, what movies can you watch over and over and they never get old? <laughs> I don't... Hmm. Shawshank Redemption. All right. And Green Mile. Uh, classic rainy day movies. I love inspirational movies. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Pretty Woman, The Breakfast Club, P.S. I Love You. Oh, God. Also, The Notebook. <sighs> Ryan Gosling, he's so good. Bridges of Madison County. Ah. What? <laughs> this girls and their tear jerkers. You don't like a good tear jerker? Do I like a good tear jerker? That'd be a no. <laughs> so you don't like to cry in films? Nope. A movie's never made you cry before. I didn't say that. Oh, so, so what film made you cry like a girl? The ones you'd expect, like The, the Green Mile, uh, Meet Joe Black, Backdraft, The Lion King, Click. Click? Come on, Click? Uh, yeah. At the end, when he's coming out of the hospital, he knows he's going to die, and he's got to see his son and daughter for the last time. Running through the rain. That's some sad shit. You didn't think so. There are many others that are much sadder. But no, but no, maybe you empathize being a man and all. It's easier to identify with Adam Sandler. <laughs> Oh, Click, Click. Click is your favorite film. No, it's not my favorite movie. Oh, what's your favorite then? Well, like you, there's a lot, but if I had to pick one, it'd have to be The Matrix. 
Really? Mm-hmm. It's not the best trilogy. No, no, not the trilogy, just the first one. The two and three are okay, but that first one was a bit of fantastic. <laughs> It's a good movie, but I, I don't get it. Men in the Matrix. Oh, I can't speak for all men, but just identified with the main character. And I get how your life can feel like a routine. Not going anywhere. It's like the idea that there's something bigger out there that we don't know about and don't understand. And what might that bigger thing be? You gonna get that? No, it's not important. Answer the question. What was the question? What might that bigger thing be? I don't know. This God will show me when I'm ready to see it. Adam? Yeah? What happened with your wife tonight? Nothing that ain't happened before. Like what? It was nothing. This is infuriating! I am going to get you to open up. It's now my mission. And <laughs> Good luck with that. I don't need luck. I'm a professional, and I have an excellent bedside manner. Uh, I love the optimism, by the way. Look, we'll just go slow. Start with the basics. We have all night. How old are you? 36, Capricorn. Good. And what is your favorite color? Black. Black, please. What is your favorite sport? Baseball. Um, why did you decide to become a police officer? Wyatt Earp. It was uh, the summer of 1994, going into my senior year of high school, and a bunch of my friends and I went to go see Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp. Mm -hmm. That three-hour-long western. Yeah, that's the one. Never seen it. Yep. Well, when I left that theater, I knew I was going to be a policeman. I just love the way that Wyatt was this fucked up, imperfect lawman who didn't take shit from no one. And then on the other hand, you have this best friend, Doc Holliday, this sarcastic, offensive outlaw that used his dying breath to save his friend. There were two complete opposites that worked perfectly together take the best attributes of each one and become the best police officer I could be. And how did that work out for you? As planned. I was hired when I was 19, graduated at 21. Like Wyatt, I did the job well. I wasn't perfect, but I didn't take shit from no one. And put a lot of criminals away, guns off the street. And like Doc, my sarcasm is offensive and misunderstood. So like them, I ain't got many friends, and my personal life is in disarray. Sounds lonely to me. Sometimes I don't know how I got here. It just feels like I'm going around in circles, and I Definitely can't figure out how to fix it. You cold? Oh, a little bit. I got, I got some blankets in the truck. Come on. Here you go. So bad. Thank you. What can you see? Can you see the meteors? 
Oh, no. You can, you can point it in the general vicinity of a meteor shower, but to actually see one would be sheer luck. Then why did you bring it? Look at the moon and the stars. Here, I got the moon in focus. Come here. The craters are fantastic. Wow. There's hundreds of craters on the moon's surface. You wonder how many times the Earth has been hit with substantial-sized meteorites. Pretty amazing. Thousands of stars. And you see the Orion constellation? I do know Orion. <laughs> if you look right below it, there's a, a really bright star. Mm. That's Sirius. It's the brightest star in the night sky. If you just stare at it, you see it twinkle emitting several brilliant colors. It's absolutely beautiful. But what about that one to the left? It looks even brighter than Sirius. Uh, that's Jupiter. Oh. How do you know? Well, uh, stars twinkle and planets stay the same. Stars uh, actually emit their own light, but Planets just reflecting the light from the sun. <laughs> you know a lot about this stuff. Here you go. Check this out. Come on. All right. Now, if you move it around slowly, <gasps> you should be able to see a couple of moons. get into this stuff? Uh, when I was a teenager. My parents would take me camping a lot, and we'd always go with uh, my best friend Michael and his family, and he had a telescope. And we'd spend hours just looking up at the night sky. And eventually, I uh, got my own telescope and started reading astronomy books so I could identify the different stars, planets, constellations. Absolutely relaxing. Does your wife share your passion? Uh, she's not into this stuff. If she would just take a moment to look at the night sky, we'd see the whole world in a different way. And human history was made by idolizing these stars. How many stories were, were passed down for thousands of years, just from men and women staring up at the night sky? Thank you for indulging me. I've never been in the fort before. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? I guess not bad. Do you know much about it? A bit. It was built after the War of 1812, on the advice of Andrew Jackson, so they named it after him. The mouth of the Mississippi opens up right here and goes right to New Orleans. So to protect the city, they built it. Saw a lot of action in the Civil War. North broke through, took New Orleans, and then the big battle for the fort. They turned it into a, a prison. 
this used to be a prison. Yeah. Can you feel all the souls running around? Yeah, let's let them rest, all right? It's amazing. All that history. In World War I, they used it as a training facility for the troops. Now we hold fairs here. <laughs> I love imagining all the history of these places. It's incredible. All the stories. I can't imagine living during wartime, though. Can you? Sometimes being a police officer in New Orleans is pretty damn close to it. But that's true. <laughs> You want to hear something that you've never told anyone before? Sure. My grandmother was a nurse during the Second World War. She's my inspiration. And in 1942, when she was working at the Red Cross in London, this American pilot who'd been shot down was brought in and assigned to her. Let me guess. They fell in love and lived happily ever after. Partially true. I can hear the cynic. <laughs> no, yes, <laughs> they did. They fell in love. And even during the war, when there's all this chaos, she said that she found this pocket of bliss with him, that they would wander around London in their own little world. And for two weeks, they'd talk and got to know each other. He bought her chocolates at work. <laughs> Expensive and a delicacy. And then after two weeks, he recovered and was redeployed. And she said that that last night they just lay there together in each other's arms. She said it was the best night of her life. And then he left. Did they ever see each other again? No. He gave her this small stone, and he said that he'd return to get it from her. But he never did. She didn't even know what happened to him. And although she always loved my grandfather, she said that there was something different, that it was just magical. She made me promise to look for that in my own life because that person does exist. She said, that person is out there for you. So, I told her I'd wait. She sounds like an exceptional woman. She was. So you're still waiting for your true love to arrive? Yes. And I'll keep waiting. As long as I have to. I thought I found it once. <clears throat> I, I've been with this guy for four years. And then he was about to propose and I broke it off. Why break it off? 
pretty simple, actually. I, I felt like we were just going through the motions. And the next stop was marriage. And I, I sort of felt that whether or not I was there, he was going to be following through with the plan. Right. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't feel like either one of us was really present in that story. So. But, but truly also, we just lost everything that we had at the beginning too. Do you know what I mean? Sure. What do you miss the most? All of it. <laughs> but really, just those, those little moments of the hand holding and you only get right at the start. It's that making out like your teenagers and staying up all night talking, lying next to one another, breathing not talking it's like butterflies the anticipation yes yes true love i don't know i just want someone who will be my best friend and passionate and also sparkles sparkles yeah <laughs> is that too much to ask <laughs> no, I completely understand. It's like every time you see them, you can't see anyone else because no one compares to them. That's true love. Yeah. How many relationships have you been in? Two major relationships. Uh, first one was three years, and then my wife. We've been together for 11 years. Just two relationships? Well, before my wife, I dated a lot. A lot of first dates, not a lot of seconds. <laughs> what about you, how many? Uh, four significant relationships. <laughs> One that lasted seven years from high school through college. Codependent much? No, I don't think so. Um, if anything, I could be accused of being a serial monogamist, but I have been single and independent for two years. Thank you very much. So what do you think the problem was with those relationships? I mean, different problems, but ultimately, we just fell out of love with one another. But do you think you were in love in the first place? Oh, I think so. But I had to experience that in order to find what I want to find. So it's all different learning. It's all worth it in the end. It's a good way to think about it. Each one of them was preparing me for when I finally meet my true love. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not really going for all that true love, soulmate stuff. Well, I'm sure your wife would be delighted to hear that. I love my wife very much. And there are a lot of sacrifices I've made in the name of love, but to say that she's my one true love is completely ridiculous. Really? Nicole, there are over seven billion people in this world. I can show you 10 women in this city alone that I'm compatible with, much less the women I don't know. Well, perhaps that's the problem. If we're basing everything on compatibility tests in our own city, then no wonder the divorce rate is so high. Mm. Frankly, if more people were patient, I think they'd find that person. Yeah, that's a big risk. Most people probably go their whole life alone waiting for that elusive true love. Well, I'll take that risk. I'd rather do that than settle. But I love baseball. 
If I believed in true love, she'd be my one and only. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm Who's your steady girlfriend? Uh, the Braves. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? Because uh, growing up, we only got two teams on TV. Uh, Atlanta Braves on TBS and Chicago Cubs on WGN. And one day, I'm watching the game, and Dale Murphy comes up. Ten feet tall, comes up, cracks two home runs, one game, and that was it. Dale Murphy was my favorite player, and the Braves was my team. <laughs> you like baseball? I do. I prefer football of the World Cup variety, but I'm a baseball convert, yeah. What's your team? The Chicago Cubs. Oh. Yep, for the same reason. <laughs> Andre Dawson and Ryan Come Sandberg. On. Fucking Andre Dawson. He was always one step ahead of Murphy. Your favorite player? No. Ted Williams is my favorite player. Very good. He's probably the greatest natural hitter of all time. I won't argue that. I love going to games. The baseball stadium is my sanctuary. It's where I feel peaceful. Yeah. It's pretty meditative. I must admit. There's nothing quite like a warm summer day going to the ballpark. Just throw your hair back, very casual, baseball cap, enjoy the ambiance. What? Nothing. What? I, I just can't think of anything sexier than a beautiful woman putting on a baseball cap at a major league game. Well, your loss. Yeah. <laughs> then did you play? I did. From the time I was six till 18 when I finished high school. Did you play? A little. You can hit the ball around. If you have a bat. I have a bat. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Shall I wait here? You weren't kidding. No, I wasn't. All right, let's do this. Batter up. <laughs> you hit a curve? I'll do my best. So it's been a few years. Ready?
<laughs> that felt good. You love celebrating, don't you? Well, not bad before underselling, I would have said. You're not too shabby yourself, Miss Nicole. <laughs> I played a bit of softball, so I concentrated more on soccer, football. I played left field and catcher. Made all district my junior year and my senior year. I was one of six guys up for two full scholarships. Impressive. Uh, what school? Lewis University. A Division II school outside of Chicago. What happened? Well, two weeks into the preseason, I took a foul ball off my knee. Fucked it up so bad, I was out for a few weeks. Mm. And when I came back, it just wasn't the same. It's very disappointing. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Why don't you hop in the truck? I got pillows, I got more blankets, I got hot chocolate if you want it. You are prepared, Adam Foray. <laughs> hmm. You want marshmallows? Of course. <laughs> Coming right up. No offense, but what is wrong with your wife? What? Nothing. There you are. Chocolate. Yeah, they melt. Mm. Feel like I'm in high school. I don't look up at the sky that much, I have to admit. Hmm. <laughs> what? It's funny. I'm always just thinking about this story, but... What? Don't read into this, all right? All right. Um, I went to an all-girls Catholic school and high school. So we would have these dances with our brother school. And my boyfriend went to a different school, so I was always alone on the sidelines. Uh, and at, at one of these dances in junior year, there was this boy, Eric, who I knew a bit through friends. He's so cute and sweet and nervous and I could tell how nervous he was when he asked me to dance. So I said yes. I felt a little bit sorry for him. And we danced all night. And he sort of swept me off my feet. And then we went outside and talked and looked up at the sky. And it's funny. It's funny how those things stick with you. It's just one random moment. So why didn't you just break it off with your boyfriend and date Eric? Well, it wasn't simple. I thought I was in love with my boyfriend, so there's that. And 
and probably just didn't want to take the risk. But I, I sometimes, I think about it. I don't think I've ever been in love. I'm 36 years old and I'm scared to death that I will never know what it's like to be in love with someone. Um, you're not in love with your wife. I thought I was. There's no way I could have been. Why do you say that? I always thought that being in love meant that you were happy with the one you're with. You forget about the past and what might have been. I thought it meant that you do things to make the other one happy, even if it's something you don't want to do. Mm. And when you do it, happiness going to follow because you know it made them happy. I've meant not wanting anything more. But that's what being in love is. I'm not even close. <laughs> Am I making any sense? Yes, mostly. Do you think that's what being in love means? Yes. I'll agree with that. When you find that person, you should want to spend your energy making them happy. Making them happy should make you happy and vice versa. Because you're in it together. Exactly. You're a team. The pastor, right before the wedding, he told us that marriage ain't 50-50, it's 60-40. Each person giving a little bit more than is expected. Don't work if you're the only one doing it. Yeah, I know it's it's not going to be perfect, and there are bumps in the road, but it should be worth fighting for. I swear to God, I am so tired of fighting for what seems to be nothing. I love this song. Yeah, I do too. Dance with me. Uh, no. <laughs> Come on. It's my favorite song. Dance with me. Not much of a dancer. Come on, up you go. Dance with me, Adam. I'm enjoying my hot chocolate. Come on. It's a dance. It's a dance. Cute, but it ain't gonna work. <laughs> I think it would lift your spirits. Mm. When was the last time you had a good dance? Oh. <laughs> uh, 1995, senior prom. <laughs> But you must have danced at your wedding. Uh, nope. You didn't dance at your wedding? No, she don't like to dance. I have never danced with my wife. Well, at risk of breaking your impressive record, whoa, whoa, dance with whoa, me. Whoa, whoa. No, I can't do it. I'm a married man. That is not what I was doing, Adam, but all right. I'm used to dancing alone, so.
joining me after all. You shouldn't be out here by yourself. Then I'll try not to be too insulted that you wouldn't dance with me. Since you're acting like such a gentleman. You know where you're going? Hmm. These catacombs. I don't know, I've never been in them. Well, then we must. No, not at night. What are you doing? Let's see. Just a little bit. Uh, you afraid of ghosts? Yeah, you can't shoot a ghost. <laughs> so wait, tell me. What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you as a police officer? Besides right now? Yeah. <laughs> March 12, 2002. You knew right away. I'll never forget it. Around about midnight, and I'm on patrol. I come up to this intersection. On the intersection, there's this convenience store, and I'm just sitting in my car, waiting for the light to change, when I see two guys running along the side of the building wearing masks. No shit. W well, what's the odds? Uh, slim to none. Never? No. Oh, by the way, this is a completely true story. No details have been changed for dramatic effect. These two guys go into the store and pull out guns. One of them jumps over the counter to the register. And I'm just thinking to myself, I cannot believe these two jackasses are going to rob this store right in front of me. So what, what, what did you do? Well, I pulled the car into the parking lot, positioned the unit where they couldn't see me, put the information out on the radio, and took out my sidearm. Oh, no. oh my God. No, I pointed it at the exit where I figured they were going to come out, established my line of sight, and I just waited. Sure enough, the first one comes out and he's holding the gun, so I put my finger on the trigger. And you shot him? No. <laughs> Almost. No. I yelled, freeze, police. He whipped around like a deer in headlights. And the second one came out and pushed him, messed up my line of sight. When the second one saw me, he beat feet up the street so fast, and the other one followed him. When they run, you know what that means. I gotta chase him. So I beat feet after him, and about a couple blocks, it hit me. I am chasing two robbers with guns through the streets of New Orleans. What the fuck am I doing? It's crazy. So did you catch them? Well, they ran into this big apartment complex, and I lost sight of them in the courtyard, and that was the scariest moment. I am in this open courtyard, completely exposed. That is terrifying. So I start canvassing the area and sure enough one of them makes a break for the street he's like 20 yards away from me and I don't know if it was adrenaline or what but I chased him down in seconds I pistol whipped him in the back of the head he goes to the ground drops the gun I straddled him and put the barrel of my gun to the back of his head and I said if you move anything I will blow your fucking head off that is unbelievable honestly I only said that because I was too tired to cuff him so, Jeez. thank god at work he didn't move a muscle about a minute later, the secondary unit arrived, took him into custody. And what happened to the other guy? Well, we set up a perimeter around the apartment complex, and 10 minutes later, he surrendered. We recovered the money, the guns, the masks. Witnesses were able to positively identify him based on the clothing description. By far, my best prop. That is a crazy story. It was the scariest night of my life. Looking back, it was actually pretty fun. Yeah. It's nice to hear you talk about your work. I can tell you really love it. Yeah, I do. And all the cop lingo. <laughs> it's amazing. Establishing the perimeters and canvassing areas. Good job. Beating the feet. Yeah, beat feet. Beating feet? Beat feet. It's like, it needs to run. <laughs> Beating feet is child abuse. <laughs> What's that? Right, right there. 
a, a satellite. Satellite? Yeah, solid white light moving slowly through the sky. Mm -hmm. Satellite. I was hoping it was a UFO. You know, every time I look at the night sky, I see something that I can't explain. Really? Mm hmm I try to keep my mind open, not speculate. <laughs> Do you believe that we're alone in the universe? Absolutely not. They're like billions of galaxies, each one with billions of stars. Be very naive to think there is an intelligent life on many planets. I totally agree. In the grand scheme of things, we are very small and insignificant creatures. <laughs> very true. Do you believe a god exists? Yes. You do? Yeah. Hmm. Do you ever doubt the existence of that god? Sometimes. I'm not that different, except that I believe that God doesn't exist in the capacity that most of us think. You sound like an atheist. More like agnostic, a semi-non-believer. <laughs> Albert Einstein once said that humans could never comprehend the possibility of an infinite God. How could we? The problem is much too vast for our limited minds. Okay. No, it's exciting. You have to open yourself up to the possibility that everything you think you know might be wrong. Small creatures such as we, the vastness is bearable only through love. Is that Einstein too? That is Carl Sagan. Okay, hypothetical question, bear with me. Do you believe in a god? What if God's plan included us meeting tonight? That we were part of each other's bigger purpose? What would you say? Well, if that was true, it would cause a lot of other people pain. Why would God do that? Well, pain is inevitable whether or not you believe in God. Hypothetically, if we were supposed to meet here tonight, would you feel comfortable knowing that I was married and that you could possibly end a relationship? No, but... See, I believe we control our lives. There is no great architect or puppet master. There are only our decisions. And the path we take is based on those decisions. And yes, sometimes there will be pain that we cause because of our choices. Would you be willing to let the possibility of true love pass you by because of bad timing? If we gave in to every instance of attraction, no one would be faithful or stay in a long-term relationship. I'd probably see a, a new attractive woman every day. But how many of them make you just say, wow? Not many. See? Any one of them could have been your bigger purpose. You just let it pass you by. Oh. That was a big one. Okay. I think this connection, this is wow. You say that. What? This can only lead down a wrong road. See, Adam, 
I'm not asking you to run off with me or even to explore the possibility that this is anything more than a chance encounter, but... <laughs> well, good, because there ain't nothing to explore. You are full of shit. Why do you say that? If there wasn't an attraction, then there wouldn't be a wrong road to go down. There isn't any attraction. Please. But... Come here. No. In the name of science. Close your eyes. No. What are you afraid of? <sighs> okay. I rest my case. What? You can't say that there's not something there. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gotten uncomfortable. I wasn't uncomfortable. Please. What? All it took was minimal physical contact. Look, I can't afford to have anything complicate my life any more than it already is. Well, perhaps that's your problem. You're worried about complicating things rather than trying to imagine the things that might make it better. I mean, what would it take for you to believe that there's one perfect person out there for you? At this point in my life, I don't think anything could change my mind. No. Well, that's a shame. Because you may have a very full and productive life. With lots of people that you care about, but you always have a lonely heart. Yeah, well, it's a two-way street, Nicole. How long are you going to keep your heart lonely waiting for something that doesn't even exist? Ooh. Excellent. What? It's a great conversation. I mean, got to love a good debate. Got you angry. I have to admit it is nice. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm fucking freezing. We're about in the peak of the meteor shower. Hmm. Head back to the truck and get warm. Yes. Yes, I do. Getting tired. No. <laughs> I don't need much sleep. I'm a bit of an insomnia. Yeah, I know the feeling. Sleep cycles all off. I like this working nights back when I was on the road. Adam. Huh? Do you mind me asking? happened with your wife that got you to this point? I met her when I was 24. And it was great. We keep our hands off each other. <laughs> Love that part. <laughs> Every time she touched me, the hair on the back of my neck would stand up. Goosebumps. Your little science experiment. <laughs> we talked for hours about everything. Took spontaneous trips. I was working nights, so 4:30 p.m. to 4:30 a.m. And she'd kiss me goodbye, and when I come home, she'd be on the couch waiting for me. Make sure I got home. I couldn't wait to walk through that door and see you. Butterflies, the anticipation. Yeah. Sometimes she'd be just laying on top of the sheets and a little something, something. <laughs> Wasn't too long before she got that itch. But I didn't want any children. It caused a big fight. Why didn't you want children? I just don't like children. 
Never have. Just don't think I got the patience or the temperament for it. And maybe I'm selfish. I want it all to myself. I want us to do whatever we want to do, whenever we want to do it. Want to take a trip? Take it. Want to lie in each other's arms and watch movies on a rainy day? Do it. Want to lie in bed naked all day, just enjoying each other's company. I can love it. You are a latent romantic. Good for you. Well, it led to a breakup. And uh, a few days later, we talked, and compromises were made. Compromises? At that point, you were going in different directions, so why compromise? Well, I thought I was in love with her. She told me she was going off birth control. So naturally, I asked her to marry me. She said yes, and was pregnant two months later. And got married two months after that. You have a child? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> got a nine-year-old son. He's beautiful. What's his name? Cody. He looks just like you. Well, the moment she got pregnant, everything changed. It was like all that affection she showed me was redirected to him. It all stopped. The, uh, Spontaneity, the snuggling, the kisses, the conversations, the sex, even the laughs. Just... The passion was gone. I wake up now at 6.30 and I turn over and she's scowling at me because I woke her up. I come home and nobody there. It's been like that for almost 10 years. I'm done. Have you tried to reignite that spark or? Of course. I try every day, but how many excuses and, and rain checks and broken plans before I just give up? You shouldn't give up. It's humiliating. It's emasculating. What's the point of asking for something you know you're not going to get? You're supposed to be with someone who wants you just as much as you want them, right? They shouldn't have to ask, much less beg. That's fair. You don't deserve that. So. How long has it been? Really? Hmm? Ten months. Hmm. Once in the last year and a half. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, it's been two and a half years since she initiated anything. Hey, I'm not just talking about sex here. I'm talking about anything. Nothing intimate anymore. I'm done. It's not worth trying for anymore. So, why stay? Cody. God, I fell in love with him the moment I held him. point, my life wasn't mine anymore. It wasn't about me. No matter what's going on with this mother and me, 
It's not his fault. My job is to make sure he's got the best life possible. To do that, I gotta see him every day. Adam, you know, your happiness and his are not mutually exclusive. If, if he sees you unhappy, that will affect him. I'd rather him see me unhappy every day than every other weekend happy. I mean, I, my brother went through the same thing. He got a divorce when my nephew was two years old and he barely sees him now. They don't have a relationship. Can't let that happen to Cody. Make sense why you're so sad. I'm not sad. You're lonely. You know, I think deep down you do believe in true love. You think you missed your chance. So it's just easier to abandon the whole concept. Maybe. So you were with this dude for seven years and you never thought about marrying him? Mm. He was an ox. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I never really thought about it. I really didn't think about it. <laughs> I wasted seven years, pretty much. I think it learned a lot. We were together for high school and most of college. He was, he was a, a status boyfriend. I was flattered when he pursued me. He was a quarterback and a couple years older, and very handsome, popular. But he had a temper and he was very jealous and possessive. When I was 16, he slapped me once and he should have ended it then, but I was young and very forgiving. Fast forward a few years, and we're out at a bar in college, and he sees me talking to another man, and he thinks that I'm flirting with this man, and he comes over, and he's all up in this guy's face, and I pulled him aside and said that I thought that he was drunk, and he was being ridiculous, and he kept shouting at me, so I said that I was going home. And as I was leaving the bar, he chucked a beer bottle at me, fractured my cheekbone, and gave me a black eye. So, let's say that that knocked some sense into me. Me too. I won't make that mistake again.
you so much. I dozed off. Nothing to apologize for. It's beautiful. Oh, no, keep, keep singing, <laughs> please. People can say whatever they want. None of it matters now. I'm peeling away the layers of the doubt. The down. I'm pulling the shade, letting light in. I've walked through the darkness to come back again. Everything ends and everything begins again and again. And here, here we are on the edge. Don't look down. I'm scared, but I know that I'll be okay. I'm here with you. Words are just words, recycled and used, meaningless to our souls. I'll start a fire and let it burn out of control, control. I'll rise from the ashes and walk through the flames, become something more than a face with a name. I die for the chance just to feel alive again, again. Now here we are. On the edge, don't look down, I'm scared, but I know that I'll be okay, I'm here with you, cause all we have is here and now, an open road, and I can go wherever I want as long as I'm with you. People can say whatever they want. None of it matters now. You're full of surprises, Adam. <laughs> what are you thinking? Honestly? Thinking how absolutely beautiful you are. And how absolutely unfair life is. Where are you going? Um, I'm tired and it's late, so I should go. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you've said it before. You're right. It's not fair. It's not fair to you and it's also not fair to me. So, we're going down that wrong road that you mentioned, or at least I am. And that hurts because you're unavailable. And I'm, I, I, I can't do this. So, so what happens now? We just go on with our lives, we pass each other on the street and pretend we don't know each other? 
stop and have a friendly conversation? You don't have to worry about that, Sylvie. It's all right. We won't have any fake conversations. What are you saying? I don't understand. Um, I recently accepted the job offer out of town. So. Where out of town? London. It's in London. I leave in two weeks. It'll be nice to be close to my parents. I've been really excited. I didn't think I had anything holding me here any longer. that wrong? Yeah, you're wrong. I came here tonight looking for answers, and I found you. I want you in my life. I, I want to see you. I want, to, I want us to be friends. Oh, I don't want to be friends, Adam. I don't want to be friends. It's not realistic. Why not? Because I don't want to be your friend. This has been amazing tonight, but it's not real. It's not real for you, and it's not real for me. And in real life, you're not happy. If you were happy, then, then maybe I, I would try to be your friend, but you're not. No, Nicole, I'm not happy. I got everyone I know telling me uh, that I should be satisfied with the mediocrity in my life. But I know this can't be it. There's got to be so much more. There is, Adam. I'm going home. Are you sure? Are you? I understand if you gotta leave. It was lovely to meet you. Good night. Bye, Nicole. When the things you fear the most come alive What happens when you go to bed at night Do you close your eyes? Are you terrified? What happens when the walls around you All come crashing down And when you try to scream out So many things I wish I could change I don't want to play the blaming game Day by day feels like my life is slowly fading I feel like the world is falling apart Who's gonna save me now that I'm all alone in the dark Can anybody hear me? Have you ever It's hard to tell what's fake or real Or if it's just a dream Like actors on the silver screen It's all just make-believe There's so many things I wish I could change I don't want to play the blaming game Day by day feels like my life is slowly
Adam. Nicole, what are you doing? I wanted to get this to you. What is this? It's the stone that my grandmother kept all those years. I want you to have it. Why are you giving this to me? Because, Adam, you have so much love inside of you to give. And you deserve it. You deserved it find someone. Maybe it's your wife, or maybe it's someone or something else. But I just want you to know that no matter what, you are not alone. And I see you. And you are a truly incredible person. Please don't. Please don't give up. Promise me. No, um, you don't have to say anything. Nicole. No, really, I understand. I, I do. I just wanted to thank you. What for? You've done more for me in one night than anyone has ever done in my entire life. my absolute privilege. Keep it close. Goodbye, Adam. Nicole. Will you dance with me? Good night, Adam Foray. Good night, Nicole Hughes.
this beautiful morning, after this fantastic night, one thing happened that I didn't expect. I felt something I didn't think was possible, something I refused to believe in. What was it I truly found last night? Is she the answer? Will I ever see her again? I'm still left with so many unanswered questions. Though my life has changed because of one night and one person, those two questions still ring true. What is the right choice? Is there a right choice? The only difference now than before I met her is hope. Since the day that we first met, I just cannot forget the way that I was hanging on each word you'd say. Well, I'm trying hard to just let go, but I'm scared that I won't ever know. And I hate to see you pack your things and go. right by I wonder if you'll ever think of me when you close your eyes and try to fall asleep little girl when all I need is in your eyes it's in your smile it's in your smile one night was not Quite enough. 